from the TFCU Energy Studio. The Rule and Ryan Show with producer Eric, Special K, and Sam. Okay, we just reset our phones. The phone number is 713-390-KRBE. That's 713-390-5723. So they do work, as, as opposed to last week work, when we had a problem work. with them last working. Last week we had problems with them. I said Sam uh, really just tested it out on uh, Ahmad. Ahmad. I can't stop laughing. Oh Sam's laughing is giving me life right now because behind the scenes I called it and Ahmad's like, hi, Rule and Ryan Show. What's do your, your name? Voice. Do your voice. Hi, this is Rule and also. I have, my name is like Rula's name. Oh, what do you oh, think okay. of that? Uh, how do you spell that? I said R U L A. He goes, hold on, you're going a little fast. How do you spell R U L A? Just like Rula. Yeah, I was like, okay, this lady's a little weird, but she's on line one. What do you want to say? I'm just, I don't have power. I'm hot. I'm very moist. My pants are swampy. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> he did not person. even flinch. He did I, not look, even flinch. Some of the calls you get, though, you're like, oh, yeah, that's like I've like, gotten weirder at. calls, man. Like um, my girl Stacy that calls all the time. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he, and oh, Amon, yeah. I could see him on. Me and Sam could see him on typing taking this in call. The in, in, and he's not turning around like there's a <laughs> crazy person on. And Sam is laughing <laughs> so hard. I thought Amon should be able to hear her through the phone. Right. Then no. he puts a Onto the screen for my phone screener, line one, Rula. She doesn't have power and she is sweaty. <laughs> hey, that's not the strangest call I've gotten, oh, definitely. Rula's like rocking and like being all weird. Uh, like, I might as well take these calls real quick, but you know, Sam. We didn't get to talk to you at this time. Yeah, because you, you had a, a yeah. significant damage. I had a huge tree fall on my house. Um, thankfully, none of us were home, so um, we didn't have to deal with the sense of, like, like panic. Yeah, here in your house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Above you. Your house shifting, because now we need someone. In, uh, I think we're having an inspector come tomorrow just to make sure the rafter, rafters are okay, mm-hmm. um, because there is def- definitely damage in our roof, um, obviously, because of the tree, but there's water damage that you can definitely see in my bedroom mm-hmm. and then my son's bedroom. So it was just a mess. But this tree is massive, and we have a tree in our front of our house that was um, on our porch and damaged our porch. And then, but I mean, it's funny because you see the tree in the front house, and you're like, wow, that looks bad. And then you go to the side of my house, and you're like, no, that's bad. Oh, man. So, like, the damage that it did in the front um, was interesting. But my neighbors, since we've moved in, they have been so sweet. They always say hi. I only knew one of the ladies. Her name is Miss Judy. Um, she got Santiago her and Santiago have the same birthday Mm -hmm. and she wears like slippers outside. She didn't have a winter jacket. Like I have given her a lot of my gently used clothes, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, previously and she still got Santiago money and a card for his birthday Aww. because they have the same birthday like That's she sweet. just would go out and about so That's she came sweet. over to help us and she's like is my she calls Santiago her husband she goes my future husband he okay I was Aww. like yeah he's okay he's just gonna sleep <laughs> but she came over in her slippers and I'm like Miss Judy what size shoe do you wear like what like you can't just come over here in slippers to help us like, that's exactly so luckily she's same size as me I was like, we got them tiny little feet. So I was able to give her three pairs of my sneakers and then give her some like clothes just because it's like you're coming over here in slippers and I to help me and you don't have you don't have power in your house. You don't have enough to, you know, kind of take care of yourself. And here you are over here helping us cut the street. down. Sam, that's what's so great. It's incredible about human nature. I it's been my experience that the people with the least have the most giving hearts. Absolutely. So I've been very fortunate that my neighbors, you know, my in-laws and they were shocked to see how sweet all the Houstonians and how the neighbors all came together. Yeah. I got five, six different people's numbers just in case something else happens or if they need help, we can reach because out and help each other. hurricane season starts and June first, yeah. yeah so. And this is a little, this is a little preview, and we did not I like the preview. Everyone's like, it's going to be terrible this summer, right? Um, Carissa is on the line at seven one three three nine zero K R B E. Hi, Carissa. Good morning. What part of town are you calling from? Hi. Good morning. I live in Hockley, Texas. Okay. Do you okay. have power, or you do not have power? We we finally got power yesterday morning at seven fifteen. <laughs> in the morning or it, p.m. In the morning, in the morning. So, it was okay. like Christmas morning all over again. Yeah. Like, You're like, oh, my God, the air conditioning's Let's on. Let's just start cooking stuff, guys. Air the fryer, air get out. On. And, and then comes the task of emptying out the fridge and cleaning that stank oh, out. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, so, most everything is gone so, now. Yeah, and our fridge was fine, which I was very surprised about. Like, we had bought steaks and a lot of meat early in the week, and we had planned out what we were going to cook. And I was like, there's no way our steaks are so good on Friday. But they were, but we ended up not cooking them so that... Um, you know, we could have them at a later time because we were just exhausted, like, from losing the heat. Oh, yeah. So 
Yeah, but we have family. I have family out in Spring Branch, and they're still without heat. So, oh, I yeah. mean, they're without still power, without yeah. power. Yep. Spring Branch power, is so. out today. Their school district yeah. is out. And, 70% uh, of the schools really in Spring hard. Branch still don't have power. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. So think of the cleanup in a school cafeteria. If we think our one fridge yes. is bad, mm-hmm. think of a school cafeteria cleanup. Oh, yeah. So once they do get power, mm. then they have to assess, like, do the cleanups of the cafeterias and get the technology back online. Because a lot of people who did get power still were having spotty cell service. And yes, just, my right, cell right. service was terrible. Cell yeah. service yeah. was bad. Like, I didn't even get any of y'all's text until, like, two days later. It was, it was, like, was like, so glad you it's got a week left, two weeks left, just end it for him. There are a lot of um, <sighs> kids who were stressed out in high school, especially because AP exams, final exams, yeah. graduation, Ooh, yeah. practice was happening this weekend. Uh, one of my friends, her son, actually graduated over the weekend, so it's kind of like, whew, oh, we made graduation just in time. But there are a lot of other schools that weren't going to be out until after Memorial Day weekend. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to figure out the plan of action for that. And so praise to any high school that is accommodating kids on their exams, their finals, whatever, because I know some schools are being r- very rigid to the rules. And Stressing out a lot of parents and well, students. I go over there like straight and say, have... Agnes, they're like, they're still going. Uh huh. And there's a lot of kids that go there from the heights. They and don't they have don't power. have power. And so nothing. how can you study? And they got finals coming up and stuff. It's right. Like... And you're already so stressed. I mean, yeah. you, uh, and you're not you sleeping focus? well because there's no power, so it's hot. No, it's hot. Yeah. And you're not, you don't have, I mean, you know, have some, I, I know during a hurricane or like during the freeze, especially hurricanes, the water didn't stop for in my neighborhood. It was the freeze that screwed us up. Yes. We could not flush toilets and all that. And there are some people who were affected that way with this storm. Right. Not everybody, mostly, most people had no power, but there were stories of people who did not have power or water. So just all of that turns you upside down. Even if you're staying with somebody who has power, that turns you upside down because all your stuff is at your house. You have to mm-hmm. go back and forth. It is so weird to be driving out at so nighttime. So stressful. Yeah. Where Part of it is set up normal. Some lights are totally out. There's not even a light. People are blazing through those intersections, not realizing that was a light. Or there's stop signs. Or then that one's working. Or this part of town, everything I've is normal in that strip center, that and that strip center's dead. Where the, it's very the, odd. you got to treat it like a four-way stop. And by the way, if you're working downtown, Mayor Whitmire announced an exclusion zone in downtown. This is a big area. It's a big chunk where it's going to be barricaded off so the workers can fix all those broken windows. And it's six blocks from Louisiana to Travis, from McKinney to Polk. And uh, it's all sectioned off like a gigantic rectangle. You cannot drive around that area. I'm going to Tammy at 713-390-KRBE. Good morning, Tammy. Hello. Hi. What area are you in, Tammy? I live in Copperfield in northwest Houston. So do you have power yet or no? No, we don't. Same, same. Mm. So what... I have sleep apnea, so I can't use my CPAP, so I haven't slept for four days now. Oh, no. Four oh days? Oh, my gosh. Oh. Yeah, it's terrible. I'm so sorry. Because if you need a CPAP, you're not sleeping There's peacefully nothing... when you try to sleep. And they don't have, like, a well, battery pack or anything for that, huh? Yeah, I'm going to buy one now. <laughs> yeah. You didn't wow. think you'd need it, then you're, like, four days later. I are, do, but... Are you, I, able, I, are you able to charge your phone through the car? I can charge my phone through the car, and I stayed in the car last night. That's why I'm awake right now. <laughs> Yeah, if she can't sleep. No, oh, um, Tammy. We saw we actually saw a tornado, a mini tornado, go through the backyard and took out half of a pine tree mm. and then the entire top of an ash tree. Mm. Jeez. I know. All mm. these different areas were affected Terrifying. so differently because I feel like like to, to, when we opened the show, Tammy, like Sam was saying how she was coming from NASA and everything was sunny mm-hmm. and everyone's mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, this crazy storm is coming. And like nobody really knew where it was coming and where it got hit the hardest. And there's like it's almost like it was in patches where it hit so hard. Like my mom yeah, lives in Sharpstown. She did not get hit almost at all. I mean, you got wind and, and trees. Never lost power. Certain trees are stronger. Mm-hmm. And, just- and then when you have yeah. these gigantic old trees that are like 150 years old and then it collapse. Tammy, mm. I hope you get power soon. I hope I get power soon in my neighborhood because I know a lot of my neighbors are suffering and uh, I, I have a generator. But for anybody who does have a generator, the worry now is we've been on generator for all these days. So now you have to call somebody to be like, hey, is this normal? Is this OK? Because if that goes out, then all the people you're housing and yourself, now you're going to be back in the same boat. And the whole point of having invested in a generator is to carry you through a post storm. And we're like, OK, well, we're going on day five now. How much longer is that thing going to last Did you before see things start to flicker? That a lot yeah. of people, sure. you're not supposed to have those inside, and they had a lot of calls for carbon monoxide poisoning. Well, yeah, that happens with every hurricane, every storm. If you have a generator, this cannot be inside your house. Nope. It will kill you from the fumes. Yep. 
There's all these rules, and then you need gas to power it, and it's just Still a lot. Still thinking of that thief that got OJ's friend. Oh okay, for those God, who don't know this real quick, crazy. he had a generator. They make a lot of noise. Well, you know who has generators? Friend a friend had a generator, and it makes all the noise. And then all of a sudden, it started getting uncomfortable again. They're like, why are we so hot, and why isn't the fridge working? It turns out somebody, um, I guess you got to give them points for being smart, but this is terrible, rolled up a running lawnmower next to the generator, stole the generator, and left the running lawnmower so the family didn't know that their it generator is- was missing. Isn't that awful? Ridiculous. Oh, that's Terrible. Evil. So anyway, everyone's suffering in different ways. I hope to God we can just get us all the 290,000 people without power back on the grid so people can get AC and normalcy It'll again. a long summer and in the fall. <laughs> Terrible. Hey, are we going to get a hold of Hannah coming up? Yeah, Hannah and Shannon are sisters who were on Roses last week because Shannon saw Hannah's husband doing something he shouldn't have been, and she wanted to... Confront him on the Rule and Ryan show with Rule and Ryan's Roses. We'll give you a recap and an update next on the Rule and Ryan show. Now, time for a Rule and Ryan's Roses update. We're going to do this on the air. 104.1 KRBE. Okay, parental discretion is definitely advised. Hannah has a sister named Shannon, and she really is a great sister. She went to her sister and said, Look, I saw your man, Stuart, your husband, Stuart, in a parking lot. He's got a very distinctive car, red, cherry red muscle car with a, a black stripe. Yeah. And uh, she was pumping gas right next to this motel, and she went over, and sure enough, he was getting out of the car with a paid escort. Yep. So she confronted him, and he immediately uh, started threatening her about this loan that Hannah and Stuart had given Shannon for her car. And, you know, Shannon came to Hannah, and as opposed to some sister relationships where they're very strained, Obviously, these girls are with it, and they're very close. And Shannon just wanted Hannah to hear it for herself with our help. We did not do a regular roses where I offered roses to Stuart. We had the patch in happen where we listened in while Shannon called Stuart on a conference call and to hear how he reacted with Shannon. And he went right with the anger with Shannon. So we're going to pick it up on this recap from last Thursday if you missed what happened. Um, to the conversation that Shannon was having with Stuart while Hannah and the rest of us here on the Rule and Ryan show were listening in. Stuart, Listen, what are can you, you calling hear me? me for? What am I calling you for? I think you know what I'm calling you for. <laughs> I'm, I want to say I think this should stop. I think this is blackmail. No. Call it whatever you want. It's a simple adult grown up understanding. You with my marriage, and your world's going to get with too. That's that. So you just make your decision. Know what you're going to do. You were in a position you needed our help. We gave it to you. Even though you're, I know that you're, you're probably not good for it. Marriage. And then you that come snooping me. around, minding somebody else's business. And yeah, you want to f*** with my marriage. The marriage that, like, if we had, you think, you think, you think she you're would have had money to f*** with your marriage. I didn't. You're the one who got out of the car. And also, what do you think Hannah would say if you just take away my loan? What do you think she would have to say about that? I mean, it's a it's a two person thing to do. So either one of us can cancel it. I would be the one who says I'm not doing it. You don't worry about that. I will handle that end of things. You know, I if do. You I make, do have one but more just don't thing. Don't make have, me. You don't know. No, no, you don't know what thing. you saw. Why you don't know Skanky anything Hooker. that's going on huh? in my private home. You don't why, know anything why about it. Why a skanky hooker? Why someone with clown makeup? Who I f- is my business. What you choose to do is yours, and you know what the consequences are going to be. Whoa. Oh, I damn. think it's everybody's that business. Is... I told you. I told yeah, you. Yeah, you got your proof. Hey, Stuart, oh. you're on the Rule and Ryan show. You're on 104.1 KRBE. You're well, on the radio here. right now, including your wife, Hannah. Hey, Stuart. What That's are you talking um... about? <laughs> so what are you always... talking about? You got caught. So you've been meeting hookers in hotels? How long has this even been going on for? How long? I don't know what you think it sounded like. I don't know what Shannon oh, just arranged uh, for oh, it to sound like. Oh, you know what I think now. it sounded like? Oh. She thinks she saw some stuff. She didn't see anything. But she's trying to make a bunch of noise. And I know me? how this kind of thing goes. When somebody accuses you, you're, it's like oh you, you, sound, you sound like you're, in a, like you're guilty even if you are literally just telling the truth. Her jealous little sister is trying to throw a bunch of lies around. And if and what I'm trying to tell her Jealous is that it wouldn't be her business anyway. When did this happen? Good job, detective. All right, I'm going to talk to my wife about my marriage. Sure, we we do not have anything to talk about except where you're going to stay the night because you're not coming home. Okay? So that that Being that straight. your sister pulls some fast ones, and that's it. <laughs> you're not going to listen to me. You're not going to hear what I can tell you about the what what's really going on here. No. I'm done listening to you, okay? 
Sounds like you were never that committed in the first place, then. If it's this easy to dislodge you from... It sounds like you were never that committed in the first place. Are you really trying to turn it around? He's he's good, Hannah. Now he's blaming you on the marriage. You were right on all of it, Shannon. It wasn't his first time, and he's... But he didn't stammer. He wasn't nervous. He was in the lie mode. That's what's scary. I can see why you wanted us to be a part of this. Yeah, he said, who is my business? I mean, to me, that's just... That's guilt. When you're married... You don't make a statement like that. No. Because the only person that you're intimate with is your wife. Okay, Hannah, so how are you feeling right now? Because I know this is just a lot. My goodness. I'm just, all I can think is, Shannon, honey, I'm so sorry that I wasn't with you, that I didn't believe you. It was so hard to even, like, conceive of this as a possibility. I love you and thank you so much. I love you, too. For bringing this to my no, attention. No, it's, it's okay. I just, want, me, I just want the best for you. It's, we're we're going to figure this out. It's going to be okay. We'll handle it. It'll, thank you. You and, me, you and me, we will handle it. It'll be fine. Man, it's great when you got family that stands by your side. That's for sure. So we wanted to check in with Hannah and see what happened since that phone call. And uh, she is standing by to tell us all about it. So let's welcome her now. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Hannah. <laughs> Good morning. So what happened? When we got out the line, you hung up with your sister. Uh, how long did it take Stuart to call? Oh, he was less than an hour. Um, he was texting me, texting me, texting me, and then then called. So what happened? I didn't let him come home that night. For one thing, I'm not letting him come home at all. He's not coming around the kids. He's not coming around me. He's still trying to get back with me. He's still trying to convince me, but... I've got a lawyer. I've been tested for all the things. I'm waiting for those results to come back. I'm just doing what I got to do. Wow, you are on top of things. You've already contacted a lawyer. Yeah, I mean, the next day I was ready to. I mean, a guy that, that's that aggressive about this, you're going to need protection and you need a lawyer, right? I mean, it's really rough, though, because think about it. Before that phone call or before Shannon ever said anything to you, for seven years of marriage and two kids, you thought you're living married life. And now your world blows up on the phone with a whole audience yeah. and that quickly you're just like you're, you seem to, you seem to have very did a very good job of making this very black and white you're very organized you're really organized okay well we're checking the box now she's a woman Marriage on a mission over. rola is he begging his way back is he trying to is he remorseful at all or is he just like you, your sister's crazy i can't believe you believe her he's he's still gaslighting me it's Definitely. That's why I was like, whoa, because he turned into another person overnight. Well, maybe he was always that person and you just didn't see that side of him. Your Mm -hmm. sister did. I didn't see that side. No, it was such a surprise. And I just was like, I'm not going to deal with this person. I'll deal with who you were before, but not this guy. Man, just think if your sister had gotten gas at another gas station, she would have never seen him go in that motel. This could be going on forever. I have been way too stressed to be this organized. Shannon is the one who's been this organized. She's the one who said you need to get tested. She's the one who who sent me like a bunch of different lawyers to check into. She's been my rock through this. She's amazing. She's the best little sister in the world. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Now, That's- have you even thought about what you're going to tell your boys? Um, I, I told them that daddy's on a work trip for now and I'm working on what to tell them. Yeah. Um, they're cool. They don't know anything yet. Well, that's still a lot you've accomplished in just a few days. I'm glad to hear that you're not being manipulated into thinking, well, I guess he really didn't mean it or yeah. that no guy's like a seasoned doing that liar. With hookers? Diehard liar. Yeah. Ugh. He's not going to try and pull her loan, is he? He doesn't have a lawyer. He's not going to do anything. I have a lawyer who says that he can help me figure it out. And so I'm not really worried about it. Well, we thank you for the check-in, Hannah. And best of luck to you. Um, Good luck. If you have any questions or you need anything, let us know. We're here. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. It's been very helpful and I've just felt better doing it with you guys than on my own. <laughs> Thank you. Well, good. I'm glad that's what we're here for. We really appreciate it. So take care and check in with us whenever you need to, okay? All right. Thank you guys so much. Mm-hmm. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Roland Ryan's Roses uh, every Thursday at 7 o'clock. It's nice that uh, the sisters uh, banded together versus like, I'm sleeping with your man and now I'm having his baby. Because we've had oh. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? How many times yeah. have we, we done roses throughout the years where the other person was a relative? Crazy. Like too many times to count. Crazy. So Hannah's got it down and uh, Shannon's going to help her through it. So krbe.com if you feel that you need Rule and Ryan's roses where we call them up. You listen to the line, find out where those roses are going to go, whether they're to you or to somebody else. Which, by or the in a way, variety of ways. We do like the catfishing, like you caught them on some app and you've created a profile now and we have to catfish them because now it's time to talk and they'll know your voice. Or we do like what we did here, the patch in. 
which, by the way, I was going to say KRB.com. Uh, right now, we've got all the school closings. It's all listed right there. There's a lot of information on KRBE.com. It's always tied into what's happening in Houston. And by this point, you should have probably gotten an email or a text from yeah. your school. Yeah, from your yeah. school. But for those that don't have power, which means they're having spotty cell service, you know, the, the, get the, the word out. I don't know how you're getting the word out, you know, talking to this person, that person. I know a lot of people who are like, Okay, well, we don't have power yet, and we definitely don't have any cell service. So I drive to like the, you know, a mile outside of my neighborhood, and then I can That's get That's how messages. I finally got a hold of y'all. I got in the car and I drove because I could not get any cell phone service. I would not do well in the Walking Dead world. <laughs> Same. Post-apocalyptic. I'm like, can y'all just go ahead AC. and attack me first? Because I just don't want to talk about like, this chaos. Hopefully, I'm a zombie. I think that <laughs> <laughs> he wants to turn. I don't want to deal with he that. He doesn't want to deal with that. More than please AC. bite my arm. Please yeah. bite my <laughs> arm. I think more than AC, you would be lost without TikTok. Uh, well, I might be lost without in a few months. Aren't they getting rid of it? Yeah, no. Supposedly. So yeah, there'd be something new to replace we'll it. We'll see. Um, in this chaos of no power and uh, everything that people have been going through, I did manage to muster up some time to watch Bridgerton. Yeah, my wife finished that. <gasps> Season oh, three of Bridgerton. Oh my, my. Uh, what gives you some scoop next on the Rule and Ryan show? Celebrity Scoop on KRB. All right, Netflix, I have a beef with you. Uh, as we talked about this a couple weeks ago, Cobra Kai, the final season, is going to be cut into not one, not two, but three pieces to just torture you. But they're giving us Can more. They just give you everything at the same time, let you just binge it on your own right. time. Don't they're really actually doing binge. something cool with Cobra Kai, so it's five, five, and five. Okay, right. 15 episodes. Drinking a Netflix ten. Kool-Aid, you yeah. uh, BS. That's crap. We're getting Give more. us all 15 of them all at the same time and let people watch it whenever they want to. You don't need to be dangling these carrots and be like, okay, you got five. Because you know what happens. You got to wait a month and a half for the next you five. You forget what happened. Exactly. Bridgerton season three came out last Friday and like in the morning. And I made some time to watch like, I think I'd watched. No, I didn't watch anything that day of Storm, obviously. But I did make sure I caught up. And it was the kind of struggle catch up where you are falling asleep. But I'm like, no, no. I'm going to finish this episode. Oh, gosh. <laughs> if you have followed Bridgerton, this is a series about what it was in the 1800s to be a high British society. And it is the debutante ball of all debutante balls every marriage season where really, as a female in the 1800s, your entire life is made up by who you married. Mm -hmm. You are born to marry someone and move along. They don't even care what happens to you after you get married. No. They just need you to get married. <laughs> They just like, well, this guy's got rank, he's got title, he's got money, bye. And then there's one character in Bridgerton of the Bridgerton eight children, because it's the last name of this main family. And she's the one that's like the, the 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 straggler who's like, listen, I'm not buying into this whole thing. And they talk about like, oh, well, Samantha Lee, I heard that she married a lord. They lived in the Heights, the Lord of the Heights. And then Eloise would be like, yeah. And does anybody talk to her since? She's hundreds of miles away, and she's miserable. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she just like, spits <laughs> the truth out. Yeah, so... <laughs> This storyline, if you follow this Bridgerton family of these four girls and four guys, mm -hmm. uh, Colin is the third son, and every child is named alphabetically. So there's Antony, there's Benedict, there's Colin, there's Daphne, there's Eloise. Um, what's the next one? She's like the one that's a uh, debutante. Um, Are they focused on now, like Colin? Colin yeah, is the is I the focus. Was season. They've kind of sprinkled Benedict's storyline within Anthony's season and now Colin's season. But across the street from the Bridgerton family live the Featheringtons. The they've Featherington? Got the, fe the Lord, mm -hmm. La Baron Featherington and his lady. And they've got three daughters, which, I mean, my God, you might as well just disappear from society. You have three girls to marry off. And one of them is named Penelope. Penelope and Colin grew up together because they're across the street neighbors. Penelope has crushed on him since season one. This season is the Colin Penelope season. Ooh. And apparently the hashtag, guys, is Colin. Oh, that's Pollen. 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 <laughs> yeah, not Pollen like B Pollen, but P O L I N. Because Colin, Colin. So is this Pollen. Pollen. in America that's or really in cute. England? British. Or? It's hey, British. British okay. society. I've yeah. never watched it. So. Did you tell by their yeah, accent there? <laughs> what do you yeah. think? Yeah. Doing a New York accent? I, I, <laughs> I mean, I sometimes out people by try saying to sound it's 1800s it's British super society. Yeah. So is it good? Are you? I think it's great. Okay. And I really had a smile on my face. 
like on part of it. Like, I was yeah. like, oh, because you just thought it was going to go one it. way. Shonda Rhimes and her team just do such a great job of surprising you on things. Ooh. So I give it a thumbs up, these four episodes. But I'm mad. I have to wait till June 13 for the next four. I'm yeah. like, come on. They want you to pay the next now. month to month. Once my family in law leaves, I'll be all caught up. Don't yeah. you worry. Sam, the one you're going to want to watch is that uh, Ashley Madison documentary on Netflix. You'll like that. Because she really wants the one no, about... No, it's... it's, it's, it's yeah, you want to think about your husband? Yeah. Scandal. Call it no, cheating. No. What's she, that? <laughs> she doesn't have to worry about that. Yeah, Mark knows. He knows better. <laughs> That's why he won't tell kill. her his ex-girlfriend's <laughs> name. See what the um, tree did to our house? I'm that tree. Yeah. Ah, Screw you down. down. And, uh, See, that's how your dragon should have sounded. Ah, ah, dragon lady. I've been working so on if, it with Santiago. If you forgot what happened in Bridgerton season two, you're not alone. I also had to go back and be like, hmm. Do you have to go back, though, in order to catch up, or do they give you, no. like, a recap? If you've never watched Bridgerton. Up, right? Yeah, if okay, you've cool. never watched Bridgerton, remember, you can pick right? up Bridgerton. I'm sure they give you a recap, okay. don't But they? it's more fun to have watched it. Because you know what I did last night? I oh, got all that time. I have last night when I had an earbud in my ear, and I was like, I just need something, some noise. Mm-hmm. I went back to the pilot episode of Bridgerton because when I watched it initially, I didn't know what I was getting into. But now that you're like locked in, it mm. feels different when you watch it for the Ooh. first time again. And I'm like, wow, this is really, I mean, listen, Sam, I said this to every woman that I've met who's never watched Bridgerton or has. We got to thank those chicks because they laid down on the ra- on the road that we're walking on. Uh-huh. Because the fact that you and I are working on microphones, Samantha... Oh, my God, Lady Whistledown. Like, I mean, this is unheard of. We yep. would be ruined in society yep. if we gave our opinions the way we do. Really? Oh, my God, Absolutely. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. We are not allowed to yeah. even speak, my Lord. Nope. My Lord. Ryan and Eric with my Lord. That's a good German accent you got there. <laughs> is it German? It's place in Germany, right? Is that That's German? Doing? Anyway, my Lord. <laughs> I'm not going to try it. It's <laughs> <laughs> the Ryan Ryan Show on KRBE with What's Going Down. 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 Come on, Sam, I'm trying. You wanted to. You want to do I it. Can't, I know, I do. My face is too smiley right now. Oh, you can't, I'm just yeah, giggling. You can't get into it? Yeah, I can't. Work it's on it. too silly. All right, here is the official perhaps. number right now. Use words like perhaps when you speak like them. <laughs> 226,000 customers still out with power. No power, according to Centerpoint Energy. Uh, let's see. Centerpoint said it hopes to restore an additional 10% of those affected by storm-related outages by tonight. If your power is out, for up-to-date information, they say follow Centerpoint on X formerly Twitter, and follow them at, at CenterPoint and then enroll in the Power Alert Service. CenterPoint has said severe weather may have caused damage to customer-owned equipment. If your home is served by overhead power lines, please check your weatherhead, the point where the power enters your home through an electrical service drop. And that's often like a pipe located on the side of the building. Uh, if the equipment is damaged, you need to contact a qualified electrician to make repairs before they can restore your service. Yeah, don't just get a guy who says he's good with wires. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you've got to get a real electrician. Happen, right? I can do it. I can Electrocution fix it. happened. My dad's got some cool tools I in read a bag. book one time, um, like in the 80s. It was like called The Time Life Book. It told me how to cross wires. Yeah, I no. could probably fix that for you. I have um, read no. a book. No, no, okay, no. so 54 schools in HSD are closed due to lack of power. Spring Branch is out today. Cypress Fairbanks is out. Aldine, Channel View, Galena Park ISDs all canceled today. Channel View ISD's nutrition services are going to provide meals for anybody under 18 at Barrett Lee Early Childhood Center from 11 this morning till 1230 in the noon, uh, uh, 1230 noon. Now, after a severe storm, they say you need to document the damage to your property and surrounding area with photos and videos. If there's a down tree leaning on your roof or blocking your driveway, your homeowner's insurance may cover its removal. Uh, the te- Texas Department of Insurance notes that your homeowner's policy will likely include some coverage for wind damage. Under state law, according to the TDI, it's likely that you'll have to turn to your insurance company, even if your house or car was damaged by your neighbor's tree. If your neighbor's policy doesn't pay, you can file a claim under your own policy. And finally, Mayor Whitmire announced an exclusion zone in downtown. This is an area that will be barricaded to allow workers to repair broken windows. That covers a six-block region from Louisiana Street to Travis to McKinney to Polk. And uh, Texas DPS will be in this area to enforce. Nobody goes into that area. So it's going to be all barricaded off. If you work downtown, 
you got to avoid those areas. And that's what's going down in H-Town. Coming up next, we're going to check in with Nelly. We met Nelly on Friday's show. She called our show to, to give us her experience with the storm because we were out having open phones. Like, tell us where you were when the storm hit because we were all taken by surprise. Mm-hmm. Nelly's story really went so much further than we ever thought it would be because she shared with us she was evicted. She takes care of her mother who has dementia. She has to have a job where she, door, uh, not DoorDash, it's a um, favor yep. type of job. So her mother her and dog can side. be in by the car side, next the to dog. her. She's living in what she was calling a roach motel because that's all they could afford after they got ev- evicted. And and we just... Um, I just think she's this remarkable. Whole, this whole story just went a whole path we did not expect. Houstonians opened their wallets um, so so spontaneously, and we're going to check in with Nellie see how she's doing right now on the Rule and Ryan Show on 104.1 KRBE.